First of all, I would like uh, to thank you all. Aid to the Church in Need organized this conference here at the Geneva Press Club about the status of freedom of religion in the world. And yet, the principle of religious liberty inherent to human dignity clearly reminds us that free personal choice and liberty of conversion must be respected and accepted. Council produce. Um, Monsignor Silvano Tomasi reiterated about the church's position. But the position of the Holy See, the position of the church, the Catholic Church, is very clear at this point. It has been a long journey, but the journey has arrived at this point that the dignity of a human person implies the freedom of conscience and therefore the freedom of choosing a religion. We know that no religion actually advocates hatred, violence and discrimination and all condemn killing in the name of religion. But religion in many parts of the world is being hijacked to attack divide and create hatred and fear among the people of different faith, attacked by fanatic extremists on false charges of per for personal score or extremist ideology is a moral cause of the same order of magnitude as the fight against human trafficking and child prostitution. Unfortunately, we have to say that uh, in 2004, 14th, we have observed a grave decline of this uh, right. From the 196 countries, 82 have uh, little or no religious freedom, and uh, around 5 billion people do not live in a situation where they can enjoy total religious freedom. That means uh, also right to change religion or not to believe in something. In our uh, work, we have identified what are the root cause of this problem, especially poverty, education, and uh, fanaticism. So these main problem has to be addressed, and that's why we are talking here how we can address, how international community can come together, how we can promote education in our countries, how we can overcome these problems of extremism, lose, uh, terrorism, sectarian violence, and protection of religious minority from the religious persecution. First of all, the voice of Pope Francis has been very clear, very even recently, when he has said that there are more martyrs today than at the beginning of the Christian history. The task that we have is to call attention to the fact not to create an antagonism toward anybody, but to bring out the evidence that there are un unacceptable ways of dealing with Christians in many countries. Most of the time, non-state actors are responsible for these acts of violence against Christians, but sometimes there is a quiet, or structural tolerance on the part of states because of the lack of separation between church and state. So if you do not belong to the majority faith of one country, you risk to be, by that simple fact, to be considered a citizen of second class or to be discriminated in being denied access to public office or to simply find dif finding difficulty in getting a job. The participants agreed that actions by the international community are necessary now in order to maintain the right of religious freedom for all.